Inflammation is essential. Inflammation keeps us healthy because it clears out foreign invaders and it allows for us to clear damage and heal. That's all part of the process of inflammation. You can't do without it. But mostly, inflammation tends to be local. So you sprain your ankle. You get inflammation because you have to clear damaged tissue and you have to heal. You cut yourself shaving. You're going to get inflammation because you have to clear damaged tissue and you have to heal. Wound healing is the end product of inflammation. It's essential. All of those are acute inflammatory responses, and all of those are localized. And that's good. But there's other inflammation. There's inflammation that's whole body inflammation, like, for instance, when you get a virus. The goal is raise the body temperature to kill the bacteria or kill the virus, try to activate those white blood cells to clear whatever the infection is. You're doing damage, but ultimately you are healing. But there is something called chronic inflammation where you don't solve the problem. You don't clear the damage. You don't get the healing because the inflammation is unrelenting. It continues because the offending agent hasn't been dealt with because you are in constant, unending exposure. The only way to stop it is to stop the exposure. So what is the exposure that causes chronic inflammation? Well, many things. They're all in the environment. Air pollution causes chronic inflammation. We know that people who live closer to freeways have more risk for diabetes and more risk for cancer than people who don't because they are breathing an inflammatory particle. What about the rest of us? Our gut. Our gut is the source of the chronic inflammation and the reason is because of our diet because that intestinal barrier has been perturbed, because it's not blocking the junk from getting into the bloodstream in the same way our lungs are not stopping the junk from getting into our bloodstream. Ultimately, if you have chronic inflammation, you're going to generate cytokines, you're going to generate uh, heat, you're going to generate the aging reaction, you're going to generate cortisol, and you're going to generate early death. That's what inflammation does. And the only way we know how to stop inflammation is get rid of the exposure. So you can't do very much about your air except move. But you can do a whole lot about your diet. So we have things in our diet that are pro-inflammatory, and we have things in our diet that are anti-inflammatory. Pro-inflammatory foods are things that generate an immune response. What, like what? Well, things that have omega-6 fatty acids, okay? Seed oils. And the reason is because omega-6s are the precursor of a fatty acid called arachidonic acid, and arachidonic acid is the precursor to all of the inflammatory molecules, thromboxanes, leukotrienes, eicosanoids, basically causing inflammation. Where do you get seed oils from? Ultra-processed food, because we're talking soybean oil, we're talking corn oil, we're talking even canola oil. We're talking about the oils that the food industry specifically uses because they increase shelf life and because they're cheap. Now, are there other pro-inflammatory foods? Absolutely. Sugar is a pro-inflammatory item. And the reason is because of that fructose molecule. 
Glucose is not pro-inflammatory, but fructose is. Why? Because fructose causes changes in the microbiome that cause the bacteria in your microbiome to chew up that mucin layer, thus exposing your intestine to all of the junk that can get into your bloodstream. Fructose nitrates those tight junctions, rendering them permeable so that stuff can get through. And finally, fructose knocks off those immunologic cells, allowing for bacteria, whole bacteria, to be able to pass through into the bloodstream because we can measure them. So sugar is a pro-inflammatory substrate. So seed oils, sugar. Sounds like ultra-processed food to me. All right, what are anti-inflammatory foods? Anti-inflammatory foods are foods that suppress that immune response. And I can sum that up with three items. The first, fiber. Now, how can fiber be an anti-inflammatory food when we don't even digest it or absorb it? Because Fiber is the food for your bacteria. It is the food for your microbiome. It's what your microbiome chews up. And if you don't feed your microbiome, your microbiome will feed on you. That's how you lose your mucin layer. So when you consume fiber, that is whole food that hasn't had the fiber stripped from it, you will be actually supporting your microbiome. And we know that because your microbiome will turn that fiber into a compound called short chain fatty acids. Acetate, propionate, butyrate. And butyrate has very specifically been shown to reduce intestinal inflammation, reduce the transit of bad stuff into the bloodstream, reduce systemic inflammation, reduce Alzheimer's disease, Bottom line, fiber is the nutrient for your bacteria, and you have to feed your gut, and we're not. Second, omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids do the opposite of omega-6 fatty acids. They are the precursor to DHA, docohexaenoic acid, which is necessary for neurotransmission and for immune health and also EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, which is also necessary for good brain function. And finally, ALA, alpha-linolenic acid, which has cardiovascular protective effects. So where do you get omega-3s from? Well, you can get ALA from fruits and vegetables, but EPA and DHA need marine life. We need fish, okay? And it's not because the fish make the omega-3s. The fish eat the omega-3s. What makes the omega-3s? The algae. The fish eat the algae. We eat the fish. We get our omega-3s third hand. Problem is, there isn't enough good wild fish to go around. And so omega-3s are a prime directive to metabolic health. And then lastly, the third anti-inflammatory food is vitamin D. Vitamin D suppresses something called the toll-like receptors that keep inflammation in check. And so by maintaining a check on inflammation, we can keep the inflammatory cascade from burgeoning out of control and causing all this excess damage. So omega-3s, vitamin D, fiber. Sounds like real food to me.